In this video, I'm going to show you a method for making your object feel grounded in renders when it's rendered in a void. So this is an example of what I'm talking about. So this is an old Quad 50 model that I was working on. and never quite finished, but I figured I might as well go ahead and break this out and do uh, some renders here. And it just feels like it's floating in this void. And what I want it to do is I want it to still feel, it's all white. I don't want to add a ground plane or anything like that. I just want it to be to have a little bit of a grounding to it. So just a little contact shadow under here would do nicely. And so I'm going to show you one method for doing that using ambient occlusion. Of course you could do that with reflections, you could do that with true shadows, um, a lot of different ways. But I'm just going to show you this one method. So in order to add the ambient occlusion onto this, I'm just going to do create polygons plane. This is already in the right place, uh, so basically I just have to size that up, just some reasonable size for getting contact shadows and then come into the hypershade, go to Maya surface, and then add a surface shader. And surface shaders are really neat. Let me just go ahead and pull this up. Because basically what happens is you say, this is the color I want you to send out. You could give it a texture or you can give it a solid color. And basically it just sends that color out onto your object. It doesn't consider reflections. It doesn't consider any of your lighting or anything like that. It just sends out that color. So this is what I want to use in conjunction with a mental ray texture, the MIB AMB occlusion. So I'm going to just click that and then middle click and drag ambient occlusion to the shader and choose default. They'll automatically hook up out value to out color, meaning whatever's calculated, uh, basically if it's, if the way ambient occlusion works is, if there's nothing around a point, that will basically render white. And as it gets closer to something, uh, it will get darker and darker until it gets right up to the edge and there it will be black. Of course, those settings are determined by your settings in your attribute editor. So let me just come over here. And I'm going to sort of step through these one at a time. I'm going to also do this at full quality just because I feel like that's the way you, you should see a good quality view of this. So you understand what's happening. Uh, and I'll just skip over that render time in the screencast. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I assign my, uh, my surface shader. So I'll just go ahead and do that. That's off screen for you, but I just, just assign that. You can see right here. And uh, basically, I'm just going to leave these at their default setting. And this is going to fail miserably and I'll just show you why in one second. So go ahead and kick this off and then I'll skip over this time. Okay, so as you can see it turns out full black, which is obviously not what I'm looking for. I want this to feel like it's still in that white void. So what's happening here is the max distance when it's set to zero, it means basically it will search an infinite distance and if it finds any object, it will basically consider that as part of the occlusion. So since my render scene is set up in a sphere, which a lot of times they might be, uh, basically it will occlude everything. So I need to set up a max distance that only considers the distance that I want to be part of that occlusion. So in this case, maybe I want this to add a very subtle occlusion down here. So just as a guess, maybe I'd set a max distance of something like 10 and just see what that does. And if it still factors too much, like if it's too gray around here, then I'll just bring that back down. And if it's, uh, you know, only has a tiny little contact right here, then I'll up that max distance. It sort of depends on the scale of your scene. So let's go ahead and see what that does. All right, so that made a really big difference, obviously. This is now looking the way I want it to, and actually, it looks like it's probably pretty close to the right uh, max distance for this. And you can see it just feels kind of grainy. All this sort of breakup that's happening in here, hopefully that comes through in this screencast. Basically, the problem with that is the number of samples. So what I want to do is just push this number up to something else that will give me a better quality. And sometimes 64 is enough, sometimes you need to go up to 128, and actually you don't have to even stay with a power of 2, just use whatever value actually works for you. I tend to stand powers of 2, I'm not sure why, it's just a habit. Um, so at any rate, I'll push that up to 64 here, and uh, that will actually change render time. It should just clean this up, uh, and I'll go ahead and just run another render of that. Okay, so again, hopefully that is different, the difference there is really visible in the screencast. I'm not sure that it will be, but it looks really nice and smooth now, and that's again because that sample count was pushed up there. So the next uh, important ones are spread and fall off. So you want to use these if you want to control um, sort of how dark this is in here. Basically what I would do is, well first of all I could also use these dark and brights. So if I didn't want it to get so dark, I could just push that up a little bit. But if I wanted that just to sort of diffuse out a little bit instead of being so sharp, basically I can just up the spread on that. 
And if I want it to go over a longer distance, so basically it wouldn't fall off nearly as quickly, I would just up this fall off number. So I'll just show you fall off, um, and I'll just maybe push that up to 10 or so, and I'll, I'll hold this one just so we can A, B this. I'll go ahead and run that again. Okay, so there you can see a pretty huge difference in uh, just changing that uh, fall off number there. And, you know, I like it where it's it has a little bit more, but like that probably maybe not quite enough and this is maybe a little overdone so maybe just come in somewhere in between you can also see here that grain is starting to come back so how much um, spread and how much fall off you have on your ambient occlusion will actually uh, determine how many samples you need to use so in this case I'm gonna drop this back down uh, and I think maybe I like the lower side a little better but maybe I'll set my fall off to something more like 3.5 or something like that and then uh, I'll see if the the 64 samples is enough, but I could also just push that up. Again, you don't have to save powers of two, so maybe I just push that up slightly to something like an 80. And again, I'll go ahead and just save that and uh, see what this does. Okay, so I did run one render in between where I upped the samples a little bit. Again, I'm not sure that, that the breakup's even that noticeable in the screencast, but it was broken up a little bit. It still is a little bit. I could go up a little bit higher, but that looks pretty good to me. So now I'll just do the, uh, the AB between this and the original frame. So let me just drop out some of these in between. So this is what we look like to start with, and then this was the initial, uh, which already looks significantly better to me anyway. This is too dark, and then uh, this one still may be too dark, actually. So um, let me just go ahead and uh, pull off a few of these uh, darker ones. Maybe that one could go too. So now we'll just have the AB from nothing into an actual space. So you see that actually just feels really grounded, although it still feels like it's kind of rendered into this void, or just really huge room in this case that's very evenly lit or something like that. Now in this case I might actually tune this just a little bit further, but I don't think that's really necessary to get the point of this across, so maybe if that was more of a fall off of two that might look more of like what I wanted it to, but at any rate you can see it's pretty easy. Basically just add uh, a piece of geometry, you add a surface shader, and an ambient occlusion texture, tweak a couple settings, and you have a really nice grounding uh, kind of